Here it is, the Boxnote Air 3C, the long-awaited successor of the Boxnote Air 2 Plus. Same as before, it's a 10.3-inch ink tablet with Android, but it got a few tricks up its sleeve. Like the newer Android 12 version and the C as in color in its name. So the Note Air 3C is a color ink tablet and we're going to have a close look at what this means, if it's worth the excitement and check out what else is going on with this latest books Note Air tablet. Before talking about the color ink screen, let's start with the build quality and hardware. The books Note Air 3C uses the same design language as the previous Note Air devices, which isn't really a surprise because that worked perfectly for the predecessor. So no need to change the overall style. They just shrunk it a little which is only noticeable in direct comparison, which means that it has well-rounded edges, which makes the tablet comfortable to hold. Unlike the heavier BoxTab Ultra devices with the clean cut edges. Speaking about holding the tablet, let's talk about the weight. Box says it has approximately 430 grams, which technically is correct, but again, not entirely accurate. According to my kitchen scale, it has 440 grams, which is 10 grams heavier than advertised. The weight difference is not as bad as with the Boxtap Mini or Tab Ultra, for example, but still shouldn't happen. Having said that, the Boxnote Air 3C is still as easy to hold as you'd expect. The grip on the side of the display is wide enough to offer enough support to hold it comfortably. And books actually listened to feedback from customers and maybe even watched my Note Air 2 Plus video because they changed the one thing I thought wasn't great about the hardware, the power button placement. On the predecessor, it was positioned on the side of the device and you could actually feel it sometimes on your hand. Not a huge deal, but definitely something that took away from the otherwise great handling. With the books Note Air 3C, the power button is now located at the top of the device and has an integrated fingerprint reader, which means it's now also flat and isn't a problem when leaning the device on a desk. That's a fantastic change. The USB-C port is still at the same position on the side, which is totally fine. They also improved the magnets for holding the pen. Even though the Note Air 3C also has a rounded edge where you attach the pen, it now feels much more secure than on the Note Air 2 Plus, which was actually one of my biggest complaints with the previous model because I dropped the pen a couple of times simply because it was too loose on the device. That didn't happen once with the Note Air 3C. What's also better is the screen protector. On the previous model, you could feel the edge around the screen with your fingers. That's almost impossible on the Note Air 3C now. It still has a factory applied screen protector on top of the glossy screen, which was done to give it a more paper-like writing feel, which I'll come to in a moment. Personally, I would have preferred the scratch-resistant smoother screen of the book's tab devices, but that might just be me. Just be aware that the Note Air 3C isn't as scratch-resistant as a result. And just a pro tip, don't peel off the screen protector if you don't need to, because the screen is glossy underneath. Unlike the Bookstep Ultra devices I've tested, the Note Air 3C doesn't creak or crack when a little force is applied and feels absolutely sturdy. And last but not least on the list of improvements is the new matte and slightly textured finish on the back of the device, which makes holding a tablet even more comfortable than the predecessor. It's a small detail, but combined with the other mentioned points, the Note Air 3C really feels like a fine-tuned, high-quality tablet. As you can see, the one thing that could worse with this change, however, is that the back of the Note Air 3C is prone to get scratched quite easily. With stereo speakers and a microphone, it's also well-equipped for pretty much any multimedia-related task you want to perform on the tablet. And with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and USB-C, you're well connected. The Boxnote Air 3C has 64 gigs of internal storage, of which around 48 gigs are user accessible. That's actually more than with Android 11 on the previous model, and it's likely more than enough for most users. 
If it's not, you also got the option to expand the storage with a micro SD card, which is always a great option to have. I love that they keep bringing the storage expansion back to more and more devices. The Note F3C uses a Snapdragon 680 SoC, which is a first for books. It's still a lower mid-range chip, but that's more than fast enough for the e-ink screen. So everything feels responsive and there's really nothing to complain about. The 4 gigs of RAM also help with the good performance. The BoxNote Air 3C uses a Kaleido 3 display, so it has the same screen technology as the BoxTab Ultra C. That means it has a 300 ppi e-ink screen and on top of that sits a passive 150 ppi color filter. The way it works is that the color layer is always visible and pixels of the ink screen are strategically darkened to only leave the desired colored subpixels of the color filter out to reflect light. I wasn't a huge fan of that approach in the past because it always worsened the overall screen quality too much in my eyes, but the Bookstep Ultra C actually changed my mind about that. It's still true that the screen's background is noticeably darker as a result because the color filter, as I said, is always visible and can be turned off. But thanks to the boost in resolution to 150 ppi, its subpixels aren't really noticeable anymore, which makes that Kaleo generation the first one I actually enjoyed using. The Box Note Air 3C is not an exception here. It's great to look at both in terms of color rendition and regular black and white text. Having said that, you still need to approach this screen technology with the right mindset. Don't expect color saturation to be on the same level as a regular tablet with an LCD screen. There's a huge difference. Color ink is much less saturated and looks more like pastel. Even compared to the smaller Bookstep Mini C, you can see a difference with the Tad Mini C having the more vibrant colors. But still, coming from typical grayscale ink screens, even those somewhat muted colors make a huge difference in my opinion. Even the user interface and library look nicer, but obviously color content benefits the most. I loved Kaleido 3 on the Books Tab Ultra C and Tab Mini C so much that I use those devices more than any other ink tablets at this point. Besides the muted colors, the one thing that you need to be aware of is the already mentioned overall darker appearance of the screen. Because of that, I don't use the Note Air 3C or any other ink Kaleido device without the front light. It's not impossible to use without the front light, but in my opinion, too dark to use comfortably. Turning up the front light makes this a non-issue though but still something to think about if you prefer ink without having to turn up the built-in light. Speaking of the front light, it lights up the display from the side and quality is good, but not great. The Boxtap Ultra C is a bit more even in direct comparison. The Note Air 3C does have a very slight brightness gradient, which shouldn't be an issue for most people, but can be noticeable if you are sensitive to it. Of course, it's also color temperature adjustable from cold white to warm orange and anything in between. Contrast levels are great with the front light turned on, so no issues here. Ghosting, however, seems to be a bit more pronounced, still on a very low level, but from time to time I have situations where I need to do a manual screen refresh to get rid of it. Something I'm almost never doing on a Books Tab device. One weird issue the Note Air 3 c screen has is this shadow on the side of the screen. Can you see that? It's barely visible, but still noticeable. And at this point, it seems to be hardware related because I think Box would have addressed it by now if it was just the software. It's not really an issue during normal use. And I personally don't see it most of the time. But still, for 500 bucks, it should be there nonetheless. One thing I'm a bit torn about is the Box Super Refresh technology, which is also present in the Box Note Air 3C. On the one hand, it offers great flexibility with dynamic content on the e-ink screen, meaning you can run pretty much all Android apps thanks to the optionally faster screen refresh. On the other hand, that technology shortens battery life 
even if you're not using that ultra fast mode. I'll talk about battery life in more detail a bit later, but just keep that in mind for now. In terms of refresh settings, the Boxnote Air 3C has four different modes. The three quicker than HD refresh modes come with a slight image quality degradation, which is why I use the HD mode whenever possible. Otherwise, I switch the ultra fast mode for dynamic content. With that, you can even watch videos, which is obviously an edge case and not something I do regularly on the ink screen, but having the option is still great. Besides those screen refresh modes, you can also adapt a couple of other display settings giving you a lot of different options to even run the most stubborn Android apps on the Ink screen. As I mentioned, the Boxnote Air 3C has a pre-applied screen protector, which offers a paper-like writing feel. I'd say it's not as great as on the Kindle Scribe Remarkable 2 or Lenovo Smart Paper, but not far behind. I don't like that the tablet only ships with the cheaper Books Pen Plus, and not with the Pen 2 Pro, because this one doesn't have an eraser and feels a bit cheaper in my opinion, but it's still great in terms of performance because the Wacom touchscreen responds quickly and pen latency is at only around 20 milliseconds. So in other words, writing on the Note Air 3C feels natural because there is almost no lag. Just not for the very first stroke you're making when not having used the pen for a while. Maybe it's a power saving measure, but using the pen after a pause will result in a delayed response at first, which is something other box devices also have. Not a huge deal, but just good to know. The touchscreen supports 4096 pressure levels, which Box has fine-tuned much better than before. That's especially noticeable with the pencil pen type. When applying more or less pressure or tilting the pen, which makes the tablet better for sketching than the predecessor. Which finally brings us to the software. The Boxnote Air 3C is the first e-ink device with Android 12, if I'm not mistaken. That sounds a lot cooler than it actually is because besides it taking up less of the internal storage, there aren't any big changes you'd notice when comparing it to Android 11 on the Note Air 2 Plus. It essentially looks and feels the same apart from the colors, of course, which isn't a bad thing because Box has done a great job optimizing Android for the ink screen. Just don't expect any huge changes. But besides that, having Android 12 makes the tablet more future-proof and that's a great thing, obviously. The one thing I would have loved to see though is the more tablet-like user interface from the Box tab devices. I get that Books wants to differentiate the more expensive, more productivity-focused devices, also in terms of its software. But to be honest, I like the classic Android launcher on those more than the regular Books launcher, simply because it offers more flexibility. With the Google Play Store integration, you can easily install third-party Android apps from the Google Play Store. Site loading, of course, works as well if you prefer that. The learning curve using the book's user interface is still pretty steep, to be honest, simply because there are a lot of options and getting the hang of everything takes time. Books has added a couple of labels here and there to make the UI easier to understand. So that helps making the transition a tiny bit easier than before. But still, don't expect the ease of use you'd get from an iPad, regular Android tablet, or a dedicated e-reader. PDF functionality is essentially still the best you can get on eink. The reading app has so many great viewing options that you can adapt it to your needs easily. My favorite is the columns mode, which is great for academic literature and comics and mangas alike. With that, the tablet zooms in on portions of the page and moves from section to section until you have viewed the whole page. What's especially great are the different options you have here. You can change the order in which the device jumps from one section to the next, and you can also alter the zoom levels. And of course, you can also directly write on a PDF page, same as with other books devices. So making annotations is really easy and doesn't need any conversions or other special treatments. Just copy the PDFs onto the device and start annotating. 
There's also the dedicated note-taking app, which allows you to fill digital notebooks with your handwriting or sketches. Besides those handwriting notebooks, there are now also text notebooks, something we've seen on the Books tab devices already. Those are essentially using a word processor, so you can type text with a virtual QWERTY keyboard or pair the tablet with a Bluetooth keyboard and start typing. And you also have a couple of formatting options. So while the Note Air 3C isn't positioned as a productivity tablet, the same way as the Books tab Ultra C is, you can still use it the same way, essentially. Just without the keyboard case that you'd be able to get for the tab device. With the handwriting notebooks, you also get a couple of more options compared to the Note Air 2 Plus. And that's actually saying something because the previous generation was already pretty feature packed. One neat feature are AI tools like the strike through to erase. With that, the missing eraser on the pen is a little less of an issue. Besides that, you have different pen types, many page templates to choose from, layers, shapes, can insert attachments, and record audio using the microphone. All in all, it's a really powerful set of features, and it would simply take too long to show everything in this video. So please subscribe to not miss my upcoming more detailed demonstration of how the note-taking functionality works if you want to learn more. You can also sync your notes with an Onyx account and have the option to choose between US, European, and the default book servers to store your notes. That's something we already knew from the previous model. Unfortunately, and that's something I suspect books doesn't like to keep hearing from me, there is still the issue of the Note Air 3C connecting to Chinese servers on occasion, which I checked with Wireshark. Devices calling home is nothing special and happens with Android regularly in any case. But if I have synchronization and update checks disabled, I'd very much prefer the tablet to keep outside communication to an absolute minimum. It might be totally innocent, but it's simply not clear why those connections are happening. To be fair, Books has a privacy policy in place, which states that they adhere to the GDPR, which is the data privacy protection law in the EU, so that gives me a bit of peace of mind. Besides PDF files, you can also read regular books, of course. The library offers a couple of useful filtering and sorting options, and the reading app has the most important functions like having multiple options to personalize text stylings, taking notes, and looking up something in the dictionary. Books has made some improvements here as well, adding labels to a couple of options, making it easier to understand what to expect. By default, it uses an online dictionary to look up definitions, but you can also use local dictionaries. But those still have to be sideloaded by yourself, which can be a pain with finding sources. There's a very nice text-to-speech function available, which makes use of the default Android speech synthesis. You can download different voices, languages, and even dialects directly on the device, and let's hear how that sounds. Her inquiries after her sister were not very favorably answered. Miss Bennett had slept ill, and though up, was very feverish, and not well enough to leave her room. Elizabeth was glad to be taken to her immediately, and Jane, who had only been withheld by the fear of giving alarm or inconvenience, from expressing in her note how much she longed for such a visit, was delighted at her entrance. She was not equal. However, to much conversation, and when Miss Bingley left them together, could attempt little beside expressions of gratitude for the extraordinary kindness she was treated with. Elizabeth silently attended her. And that finally brings us to Better Life. The Note Air 3C has a 3600 mAh battery, which is on the same level as the Note Air 2 Plus, but much smaller than the 6300 mAh in the Books Tab Ultra C. That comparison is important because we already know that the book Super Refresh technology negatively affects battery life. The Note Air 3C is no exception, unfortunately. Even when not using the ultra-fast refresh mode, the battery drain is much quicker than on the Note Air 2 Plus. I used the automatic page turn function on the Note Air 2 Plus and 3C to get a reliable comparison. With 15 seconds between each page turn, the 2 Plus drains the battery of only around 2% per hour, 
while the Note Air 3C needs around 7%, both without the front light. As I mentioned, this isn't the real use case for the Note Air 3C because without the front light, reliability isn't all that great. The same test with the front light on 100% brightness on the Note Air 3C and a similar level on Note Air 2 Plus results in a 13% drop per hour on the 3C and only 3% on the 2 Plus. So that puts battery life at around 7 to 8 hours in that test. Not great. Personally, I would have preferred if books didn't implement the super refresh technology here. Don't get me wrong, it offers great flexibility and makes handling dynamic Android apps much better. But it's a trade-off for battery life, which I feel is more important in a device like this. Please leave a comment and let us know if you agree with that or not. When using a pen, battery life gets even shorter. But to be fair, that's not specific to the Note Air 3C. All e-ink tablets with a Wacom screen suffer that same fate. So just keep that in mind. All in all, don't expect the Note Air 3C to do much better or better at all compared to an iPad in terms of battery life. And that brings us to the conclusion of this review. So let's get straight to the point. In my opinion, the Books Note Air 3C is the best e-ink tablet Books has released so far. It has the same paper-like Kaleido color e-ink screen that I love using on the Books Tab Ultra C. It's true that the display is darker overall and you need the front light to comfortably use it, but having colors, even if they are a bit muted, makes the user experience so much better. Combine that with the great build quality and haptics, as well as the excellent Android customizations for e-ink, the awesome PDF functions and great note-taking features, and you have a winner. But the Note Air 3C is not free of flaws. The user interface is not especially easy to get into, the mentioned data privacy concerns are still a potential issue, the weird shadow on the side of the screen the cheaper pen option that comes in the box, and not to forget the short-ish battery life are the most important downsides to mention. Most of those are small issues and won't affect everyone to the same degree, which makes the Books Note Air 3C one of my easiest recommendations in the e -ink space. The Note Air 3C continues the silent revolution on the e-ink market that the Books Tab Ultra C started. I wouldn't be surprised if the Note Air 3C even outperformed the Note Air 2 series in terms of sales. Just be aware of the mentioned drawbacks when making your decision. Like and subscribe if you found this review helpful and to not miss my comparisons to other e-ink tablets. Thanks for your time watching and see you in the next one.